Rory, you mentioned that you never thought you could actually have the, uh, you wouldn't want to become a professional punter, but you've done a lot of jobs in racing and betting. Uh, can you tell us some about them? Um, yeah, I'll tell again. I'll go back to the start with that. I, I wanted to be a vet many moons ago. I'll try to cut this reasonably short. I had the, the, um, the grades to do it, but a very difficult course to get into. Didn't get any offers. Um, ended up doing a, a, a year at university doing something I didn't want to do, and then decided that I would um, come to London where the streets are paved with gold and find a, a decent job. And I spent a long time doing some very interesting jobs but stuff which wasn't really um, right for me until I decided to do a job that I was interested in from day one and applied for um, a job as a betting shop manager. And that was with Labbrooks back in uh, 96, 97, um, which was the best decision I've, I've made in terms, of, in terms of my career. Um, and I probably should have done it years before, but it was a case of it wasn't deemed to be a um, a respectable way of making money, especially by my mother. So um, I, I, I worked in the civil service for years and I managed off licenses and um, I even taught in an exclusive girls prep school. Um, and they were all interesting experiences. But getting involved in the, the betting side of things was, was a, you know, a big change and it was something that I immediately knew I should be doing. And that was at a time when betting shops really were what they're what they're proclaimed to be now they were social hubs it was a great time um you know just for the fun of the job it was still it was still terrific it was mostly about horse racing um we took 70 75 percent of our turnover on horse racing most of the rest on greyhounds uh, and at that stage football betting was was almost non-existent because it was heavily regulated and you, if you wanted to have a bet in a football game you had to have uh you know either a, a treble of draws or a fivefold um to in order to to get around the um the laws it was at the time so football betting wasn't huge um and all your punters were horse racing fans um, and I, my first job was in a, a Market Street in London, Church Street, off the Edgware Road, and it was full of cheeky cockneys, essentially, um, and people who just loved a bit of a laugh and liked to bet on the horses. Uh, and it was really busy. We took a hell of a lot of um, of night bets, and I, I, I can't think there are that many bets these days other than football bets that, that you need to deal with. But when I started, we would have 150. Um, uh, bets overnight, which were sometimes football coupons, but mostly Greyhound doubles. You know, it was where a lot of your punters were doing 1p forecast doubles through the car, traps 1 and 2, traps 5 and 6, whatever it happened to be. Um, and you're on your toes from the minute you got in the shop. The punters were queuing up outside at 10 o'clock to get in. Um, and it was bloody hard work, but it was bloody good fun at the same time. Um, and I went, the, um, I went through the grades as it were at Ladbrokes. Um, managed shops for, for three or four years, um, then did a bit of uh, district supervising, which was less fun, being out of the shop and trying to arrange staffing and stuff like that. Um, but then I got a job as the operations manager at head office, which I really enjoyed, um, dealing with communication on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and I quite like the sort of crisis management of that. When something happens, that demanded immediate action. You had to have emergency meetings with the, the head of operations and the head of trading and stuff like that there. That was where I was um, in my element, if you like. I wasn't particularly good at planning ahead um, strategically, but if, if there was a crisis coming, um, as a shop manager, I was very good. I, I single manned an awful lot. I loved the I loved the pressure of the job. And the, the tougher it was, the more I kind of enjoyed it. Um, from that, I wanted to get into trading, which was a brilliant idea about 20 years before I wanted to do it, but it was, um, the game had changed by the time I wanted to do that. Um, I missed out on a, a job as a, an old, a junior odds compiler with Lambert's, but in fairness, I would have been in my early 30s at the time, and it's not, it wouldn't have been the greatest um, step to take at that stage. What it did allow me to do, I took, um, I took redundancy. I'd been there almost 10 years. I got a cash sum and I went punting for a year, which again, I really enjoyed, but found that I probably didn't have the mentality to do it. Um, I made a small profit, 
but not as much as I should have. I wasn't as disciplined as I should be, and I was too careful when I should have been bold, and too bold when I should have been careful. Uh, and you learn who's got the cojones uh, for the game very quickly, and clearly um, being a fair judge is not enough if you want to be a professional punter. You, you've got to have um, the mentality for it, and that's something I, I, I have to admit I probably lacked. So then, how did uh, Star Lizard come into the um, I Again, still, still um, looking for jobs in the industry. I, I uh, went on a, uh, a trading course, which was run by um, a, a company who, who specialised in recruitment for the industry. And I did, I did a two-day course, and I thought it would be useful for me long term. And then I got a phone call out of the blue um, saying that this... Um, uh, the company were looking for traders and a load of us who went on the course got a call up to, to go to preliminary interviews and that was a firm called Premier Bet um, which was uh, Tony Bloom's um, betting company um, which became Star Lizard essentially um, I, I guess he's, he started off with um, playing you know uh, poacher and gamekeeper um, but he was I'd say it's fair to say that Tony was, was making a lot more money punting himself than he was um, out of punters, but I think he knew how to um, how to find information in the market and, and to know what was going on, and that served him a purpose. So I, I started doing that when it was a small company in Finchley. There were probably only about 25 of us in an old office building, um, and that grew over time. Um, until the whole um, thing moved to Camden into purpose-built offices which were tremendously grand and very expensive looking and um, you know it was it was a big old operation um, after I was there for about uh, four years but you couldn't work for Tony Bloom for more than a, a few months without learning an awful lot about about punting particularly